Just gorgeous. Well, it's playtime again. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some outrageous venomous snake TikToks, and as always, I'm hoping to hear what you think about these. Let's dive in. And these are not toys in any stretch of the imagination. They're not toys, no shit. This is a venomous reptile. A very dangerous venomous reptile. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. Just gorgeous. That's a little bit close for comfort. <laughs> what a result. We say it's not a toy, then we play with it like a toy, then you almost get bitten and go to hospital, and the snake gets slapped on the floor. Yeah, amazing. I'll tell you, now, go, 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 go. Have you got it? Yep. Hold on, wait, wait. You tell me when you want this ad. Wait, take it out. I got it now. Good man, good man. Okay, come on, big girl, look at those, look at those fangs. Come on, girl. Look at those fangs. Oh! What a cocktail of venom. That makes your butthole pucker something rotten. Ooh, bro, look at it. Goodness gracious. I had a mate of mine who was bitten by one that was like a foot long, a baby. He was unconscious in two minutes. That was an odd matchup to see. Dingo Dingleman, who's widely loved, and the real Tarzan, who's widely hated. Frankly, I don't really care about who is or isn't popular, myself included. What I am interested in is whether that venom was used and therefore whether it was worth the stress to the animal of doing that stunt. <laughs> that was a nice slap. That was a uh, public service slap. He was just saying, look, I don't want you to get killed, get out the way. I have no idea why if someone's handling a venomous snake you'd go and try and mess with the situation or get involved. I guess snakes just have that effect on people. A pair of eastern green mambas, they are incredibly beautiful snakes. I think they look gentle and calm. Not docile, but very, very calm and relaxed when they're in the element. I don't think they're deserving of this whole reputation that goes with the name Mamba. I think they're just beautiful, amazing animals. The swabbing we're doing today is just a precautionary step they're doing just to make sure they're smicko. So the swabbing's really dangerous. I've got to pin and restrain the snakes. I've never restrained rhino vipers in my life, so I was really nervous about it. They've got like elastic jaws. You know, I pin snakes all the time, but I'm used to pinning our Australian lapids, which have got fixed, tiny little French fangs that don't move around. These things move a lot. So I just got to make sure my fingers are in the perfect spot. And so I still do the usual technique with our pinning device. Once I've got them, we've got to open the mouth right up. Giffo's got to come in with the swab give it a good wash around the mouth and not get bitten. And this is just precaution that we do as part of our quarantine procedure. That was Bill Collett doing a swab as part of their quarantine procedure, like you said, on a rhino viper. A snake's mouth is like an interface between the snake, its prey, and its environment. So in many cases, the mouth is the first place that an infection will show up. Most of the time, it's gonna be bacterial, but sometimes you can pick up fungal infections or you can pick up, you know, evidence of parasites. So it is a very good practical step. Wow. People go into all kinds of intricate explanations with these things and try and make it more sciencey. Me, personally, I just say, look at the snake. Look at the length of the snake's body if you freeze the frame there. Does it look longer than the distance between his two hands? If it does look longer, then it can bite his other hand. Don't worry, no one's going to be hurt in this terrifying footage. That was a western hognose snake, of course, they're mildly venomous, they're rear fanged, and you know, it can, could give you an allergic reaction. It doesn't seem to happen very often, I've never met anyone personally who's had it happen, but their venom, you know, overall is mild. They're funny little snakes and they're sometimes picky with food, but not often. When they are hungry, if they get confused like that, there's not a lot you can do to change their mind. Yeah, 
Something I like to say on this channel is there's always an excuse for abuse. And people won't see that as abuse, but me, I see someone teasing a snake, and I always see people give a reason for it. I'm mastering the snake, I'm mastering myself, I'm making a connection, it's about energy, it's about understanding, it's about education. No, all of that is a bunch of crap. It's about teasing an animal that looks a bit scary, and you get some clicks and views for it. Now, this next one was sent in by Jerry Haynes who is a South African snake catcher, and if you get upset easily, it's probably a good time to look away because this snake wasn't treated very well before he got to it. Mm, Old egg. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't smell nice. Doesn't smell nice. I don't know how to, I don't know how people are capable of such cruelty. Cruelty that some people are capable of is just incomprehensible. It is true. Everything is like snot because of the eggs. Mm. I'll explain the eggs in a second. So he has rescued that snake, he's taken it into care, and I believe it's making a good recovery. What happened was, when he's mentioning eggs there, basically he got to the residence, the snake was tied up with string, had these PVC tube things, I don't know what they were, something to do with plumbing I'm guessing, forced onto its body, and the people had been trying to force it to eat raw chicken eggs, and the bucket had no holes in. So this snake had been captured and, and just tormented basically, and afterwards in the comments Jerry says that they wanted him to, to pay them for it. That was really cool. That's an account called Queen City Constrictors who are keeping tentacled snakes to a high standard. The tentacled snake is an awesome, mildly venomous rear fang snake which specializes in fish as you might have guessed and it kind of profits from the fish's what you call a sea response to predictively strike at where the fish is going to be and it makes them incredibly fast and accurate at striking and grabbing fish which would be you know almost impossible for a human with bare hands and what also amazes me is how fast when they do have the fish in the right orientation they actually swallow it. That is probably a response to evolving in a highly competitive environment with lots of predators. You don't want to spend too long gulping down a meal. I just caught this out of the water. Look at the tail! Wow, this is so cool. This is the most beautiful snake I've caught so far. You can get this guy's reaction. I came here with the lizard and he was like, yeah, what the hell? Now it's a snake. So that was a yellow-bellied sea snake. They are, you know, ridiculously potent in terms of venom. They've got a highly neurotoxic venom. It's evolved to help them kill fish, and fish are very slippery and very, very fast. So ideally, you want to grab a fish, bite it, and have it die in a couple of seconds. You don't want to struggle. You definitely don't want it to get away and have to look for it. And they're just a snake you should never pick up, even if they are very, very docile. They're incredibly well adapted to the pelagic lifestyle, so much so that when I was a kid, people used to call them the pelagic sea snake, but for whatever reason, that common name's just going out the window. They've even got almost hexagonal looking scales that fit together like tiles to reduce the drag of the water on them. The only thing I would say about that clip, however, is uh, I'm not sure if I got fooled with that one. Uh, I think maybe he did know what he was doing, and maybe I, you know, saw it and assumed otherwise. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please do like and subscribe. I'd love to get that silver plaque. There's a few places I've worked in the past where I'd like to take it in and say suck on that. Thank you very much.
That was an Eastern Brown, believe it or not. The second deadliest snake in the in the world, I believe. Well, second most potent venom. Um, and it was just showing that really, if you don't do anything to it, it won't do anything to you. Personally, I'd always advise you to get away from one if you see it rather than just stand there. But obviously this person was, was demonstrating that it isn't this demon that people make it out to be. No, no, that's the, that's the big category. And then you go down to rattlesnake, but what kind of rattlesnake? Mm -hmm. Look at their backs and what's on them? Diamondback rattlesnakes. Yeah. That was Western diamondback rattlesnakes waiting for slaughter at a rattlesnake roundup. That's just insane to think of, you know, killing animals needlessly, but also insane to think of all those meso predators that could be out there controlling pests and doing work for you for free are instead going to be skinned after being killed. All right, where's this cracker? Oh, mate, I've just, <laughs> just got it in there. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is seriously going to be some of the best reinforcements that I've seen. Have a crack at this guy. What a stop. This is definitely Sunshine Coast snake catchers, I think. Hey, what are you doing? He's scared shitless. He did that five minutes ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's uh, yeah, see all they do is that's, um, he can't figure out all. He's just feeling stupidly exposed at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and that there's nothing for him to hide under. There's uh -huh. all this movement, all this sound. These uh -huh. guys can hear. So, um, yeah. yeah. He was reacting to my voice, actually. I yeah. Noticed. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting point. That's why I'm always saying that I don't like it when I see videos of people running up and grabbing snakes and screaming and yelling and stuff. People say, oh, they can't hear you. You're being too soft. But no, they, they can pick up on it. Hey, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that weapon. Okay, and look what he's trying to do. He's just trying to get, get away. Hey. Holy fuck. Enough. No, you don't. Yeah, check that out, guys. Holy oh, Good catch. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, one of the common. There. Oh, yeah. Enough. Oh, yeah. Enough. In you go. Oh, I see. No, that. That's oh. all I wanted to do, which is going hard. That's a very lively agile snake that was cool to see though because he's really skilled and he's explaining to the people why the snake's acting that way why it's feeling exposed frightened etc he's doing education while he's grappling with a very very dangerous animal here we've got a guy who appears to be rescuing a uh, russell's viper from a shoe i'm very suspicious that that is actually his shoe which he has taken off to stage the video <laughs> Okay, so he successfully rescued the snake. Let's do a little quiz to mix things up. Will he A. Calmly place the snake on the ground B. Try to kiss it or C. Dangle it around until it almost lands one on his femoral artery Well, let me know what you got in the comments. Okay, so... Ruby and I have come across a little challenge on our walk on the trail right now. Ruby is staying right there because she's a good girl and I need her at a safe distance. And I'm going to approach our friend with a long walking stick. Not really a walking stick, but a long stick. So right here, we have a rattlesnake. It's coiled up on the trail and we need to safely move past it. I'm waiting a while to see if they'll move on their own, but um, I think we're going to have to prompt this snake to make some moves. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna, yeah, there we go. I don't want it to be surprised so that it knows I'm here. Smart lady with a well-trained dog. And that was easy, and it was working with science. They can feel vibrations, so just make some vibrations and get rid of it without getting near it. That's just so sensible, I hesitated about putting it in the video. Fish, fish, fish. Where is my fish? There you are. Get in my mouth. Hey, no fair. I've got you now. Come to Papa. I'm gonna bite you. Ra. What the hell, man? Cup, cup, cup. Where's my fish? Found you, bastard. Fish, roar. Fish, feel my wrath. Fish.
Stupid. What the hell? Finally. Sushi anyone? Fish. Fish. I go eat now. Thank you for fish. Girl, bye. That one's interesting for a couple of reasons. First is that many garter snakes are in fact mildly venomous, and when I was a kid we didn't even know. We had no idea. They're not dangerous, obviously. Second is the fact that you should never feed garter snakes goldfish. Goldfish contain thiaminase, which inhibits the absorption of thiamine, which is an essential B vitamin, and it can give them like neurological symptoms and just completely mess them up, basically. So never, ever feed goldfish to garter snakes. That said, it was a very cute garter snake. I'm sure people let her know. Now, I just wanted to end on a quote here from Benjamin Franklin, which I found really interesting. He is someone who is now controversial, apparently. I don't really look too far into it. I mean, many of us probably would have become controversial if we existed at a time when you could buy opium over the counter. You know, those were different times. But I just find it fascinating that someone that far back in history had this insightful quote about the rattlesnake. He said, She never begins an attack, nor when, once engaged, ever surrenders. She is therefore an emblem of magnanimity and true courage. Tis said she never wounds till she has generously given notice, even to her enemy, and cautioned him against the danger of treading on her. I think whatever you think of him, I think that was a beautiful and insightful quote about one of my favorite snakes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back next week for something else. Thank you very much.